Okay, how have we observed potential and kinetic energy changes uh, with a falling mass in a rotating system? Well, typical situation is the wheel with a weight uh, hanging from a string that's wrapped around the rim of the wheel. Could also be wrapped around the axle, doesn't really matter where it's wrapped. Uh, the point is that we can measure the changes of potential and kinetic energy fairly easily with this system. And we do that by first of all uh, measuring the distance that the system falls and we get some change of potential energy, which is negative of course. Now uh, this PE equals one half kx squared incidentally applies to the figure below here, so let's ignore it for the purposes of this figure. Uh, maybe draw a little line. To separate one from the other. Okay, so our delta PE is negative, which implies a positive delta KE. Now the positive delta KE ought to be equal to the negative uh, to the negative of our negative delta PE. And we can easily measure the delta PE and delta KE. Uh, well, it's actually not all that easy to measure, but we can measure the uh, rotation of this system. And we can make inferences here. So that uh, by observing this, we can determine what's going on. Now there is a delta W against friction, and we can compensate for that by seeing how much weight it takes here, or how much mass we've got to put here to overcome the friction, and then uh, taking the delta PE of the additional mass and setting that equal to the delta KE. And that really gives us pretty good results, well within our range of observational error. Okay, now number 13, uh, what can we, how can we use uh, the uh, idea of conservation of energy to make conclusions about the velocity of a simple harmonic oscillator at different positions? Uh, the potential energy of an oscillator position x is one half kx squared. Potential energy at maximum displacement, which is called amplitude, is one half ka squared. And the uh, object, of course, is at rest here. So that if we release it, it will attain a kinetic energy here that's equal to the difference of these two potential energies, the negative of the difference. We'll have a potential energy change from here to here. Since x is less than a, it's going to be a negative change of potential, which gives us a positive change in kinetic energy. And uh, we see that the potential energy change, of course, is uh, potential energy here minus here, uh, 1 half kx squared minus 1 half ka squared factor out to 1 half k and we get this expression, so that our change of kinetic energy will be the negative of the change of potential, which will be the negative of this, and we take care of that negative just by reversing the signs in the x squared and the a squared here. We distribute the negative through here and change the order of the terms. Okay, so since this change in kinetic energy is equal to the kinetic energy at this point, since again we had zero kinetic energy here, we see that at the position x, 1 half mv squared is equal to this quantity, 1 half k times quantity a squared minus x squared. Uh, if we factor out an a squared here, uh, well, first, uh, the 1 halves cancel. We divide through by m, we get k over m, and we take the square root, we have a square root of k over m, which is our omega, and then we can do some factoring in here. We can factor out our a squared and actually get an omega a out here, which is our maximum velocity, times the square root of 1 minus the proportion x over a quantity squared inside the square root. And we've seen that recently, so I suggest you review that in your notes. For a minute, we're going to jump back to number seven on uh, explanations, which we haven't covered, and say that uh, in a closed system, okay, the question here is how do we get conservation of momentum from Newton's third law? Uh, in a closed system, when two objects interact, they exert equal and opposite forces in one another. It follows that our F delta T contributions are equal and opposite, so our change in momentum is equal and opposite, and our total change in momentum is zero.
Okay, we'll come back to number 14 in just a minute.